This is Create the Next from Pro CFO Partners, where every week we explore strategies and ideas for financial management and growth to help today's businesses put their financial picture in context. Welcome back to Create the Next. I'm Chris Bentliff, and I'm here with Joe Shake from Pro CFO Partners. And Joe, it's good to be with you. We are in November. Nelson and I had a conversation last week where we were talking about goals and strategies, especially as we're kind of thinking about moving into 2023. I thought today we'd have a, a conversation about something that I know you're expert in and that I know is uh, is a place where you can offer a lot of guidance, which is sometimes in my organization, we're all moving, it seems, in different directions. And uh, even if we have sort of a common vocabulary about things or we start the year a certain way or we have our quarterly meetings, if I'm not doing what my colleague is doing and heading in the same direction as that department over there, I think it's all going to go amiss. So I thought today maybe you could start by giving us some impressions on how do I know when I'm going off the rails? How do I know if my sales team is disconnected from operations, is disconnected from marketing, is disconnected from HR or leadership? What are some of the symptoms that I'd be dealing with as I started to experience some of that? Well, I think the best way to start with that is looking at it from a standpoint of does every employee have goals set up in place? Do they have key performance indicators established for them that are measurable? Uh, if you go back in time, Earl Nightingale once said, um, if you don't know, if you don't have goals, you don't know where you're heading. You don't know where you're going. No true words have ever been spoken, in my opinion, because it is very true that if you do not have goals, then you do not know where you're going. You don't know where you're heading. And you cannot assume that every employee within your business is going to know what those goals are for themselves. So it's up to the managers and the leadership team to establish the goals for each employee so that they know, OK, this is my expectation of you. The other side of that is making sure that you communicate that very clearly with people. You don't want to get into a situation to where somebody assumes they're doing the right thing and then ends up finding out after the fact, oh, I didn't do it the way you wanted me to. Sorry. It's a little late at that point. So it's very important to establish the goals very early on. At this point, I mean, this is a great time of year to establish your goals for 2023. So as you say, it is Definitely a good time to have this conversation because, again, this is a perfect time to establish the goals in the right way for setting up for 2023. And, again, it's all a matter of setting up those goals and then holding people accountable to them. Can you teach us a little bit about how we should be thinking about these goals? Because I've been in organizations and I've, I've uh, consulted with organizations where the goals are kind of vague or are really broad. So we want you to help us to reach this goal. Well, what does that mean? Or even um, we'd like you to take more of a leadership role in meetings. What does that mean? So can you give us some ex examples of, of what a good sort of context for these goals would be for an employee? What, what are some of the things we should be empowering them with as far as those targets or those, those metrics? Uh, absolutely. The goals need to be measurable. That's first and foremost. If you cannot measure a goal, if it's subjective, it doesn't make any sense really because then you're just going to have areas of gray that it should be black and white. You either hit it or you didn't. Now, in the world of financial, obviously, it's very easy. Um, in their world, it's probably the easiest of worlds to set up for accountability and goals because they are always measurable with respect to, okay, we need to hit 25% net income, or we need to hit a net income of 20%. That's not 18%, it's 20. So whatever you establish, that's your percentage. So that's the net income I want to have. Or if you put it to a dollar number, I need to have a net income of 1.5 million at the end of the year, or I need to have such for the each quarter, however you do it. It's a number. It's a very easy thing to target. Some areas get grayer when you start getting into, say, areas like engineering and operations. And when you get into that area, you start to look at things like, I'll say, utilization. How are you plan How are you setting up your man hours? And are all of your employees fully utilized? 
If you know, you cannot, as much as everyone would love to say, oh, I have 100% utilization, it's also not realistic. So you're looking at trying to set up within the operations side to say, okay, I want my employees to be 80% utilized, knowing that some people are going to be on vacation, some have sick time, whatever, they're not going to be, they'll be tied up in meetings, they're not productive in some ways um, towards the productivity. So you say, okay, I'm losing time there. So if you set yourself up with a goal of 80 or 85% productivity, again, that's a measurable number. It is very easy to be able to track and should be tracked within operations of hours that are put towards towards production. So again, it's kind of, there's always ways to establish some measurability, uh, even from a standpoint of QC saying for safety. Um, okay, we do not want to have any lost time recordable accidents, or we want to keep if the other area in operations, you could say, I want an error rate of less than 2%, okay, something from an engineering error rate, whatever that situation may be. So again, sometimes you have to think about it. It's a little harder than, say, on the financial side than it is to measure, but there is always a way to find some number that is measurable. And that is the best place to start. Uh, you have to have the conversations with the employees. You want your employees to be engaged as part of that. If you just set the goals up for them and throw it at them, they're probably not going to succeed. So you want to make sure that your employees are fully engaged in the conversation with you when you're having to set up their goals so they can come back to you and be able to say, you know what, I agree with you. Or I don't, I don't think I can hit this number. This is not a realistic thing to do. Okay, let, let's have that conversation. So when you are setting up those goals, when you are setting up that accountability later on to, throughout the year, people have already had the conversation. They know what to expect. You can't have it to where it's a hidden number and somebody doesn't know what it is. Um, I've seen all too often to where everybody says, oh, I've got KPIs. Okay, do your employees know what they are? Well, I don't know, they should. Okay, well, that doesn't help much. They should and they do are two completely different things. That is a really powerful insight because I think you're right. A lot of managers and executives and decision makers will know the KPIs and sort of, I don't know, hope that they trickle down through osmosis or something. What if I'm, I don't know, maybe an entrepreneurial or I'm a younger company or I'm a kind of a startup or maybe I'm a company that is a family business and I've been around forever and ever and this is always the way we've done it and I haven't done it maybe this way. What are some ways that I can start this? Because if I'm a, an executive or an owner or leader and I'm listening to this in November and I'm going into 2023 and I'm hearing you say these things and I'm thinking to myself, I don't have any of that going on or it's really not well done. It, it can feel overwhelming for me to start to uh, adopt kind of a culture of measurement or of, of, of key performance indicators. What are some easy kind of first steps that you might suggest for us to start this the right way so that we can have sustainable success. Okay. Um, the first part of what you're saying, I kind of snicker, obviously, because um, it is all too common with respect to any business owner to have some confusion. I'll say, where do I start? How do I set this up? Business owners are going to be brilliant in what they do. Okay. And that means, okay, I created this business because I'm good at it. I know how to create this widget, or I know how to provide this service. That doesn't mean they're going to be brilliant in every aspect of setting up an organization. They are going to be brilliant in what they know how to do. And that's why they created the business to begin with. The other side of it says, okay, now how can you surround yourself with the right people to know how to keep it going. And that's where sometimes you need to make sure that you have set yourself up with, okay, I've got the right engineering side of things. Now I need to get the right financial person. I need to get the right business-minded person. Sometimes you may need to go outside to hire an outside consulting team um, to say, okay, how do I get set up? How do I do this? Um, so sometimes it's it's that might be the way to start. Other ways to start is by, Again, truly having conversations with your leadership team. Put the leadership team into a room and have them fully engaged with where they're heading. 
put together flash reports, as I'll call them. Flash reports are great as a weekly target to know, okay, these are the goals I'm trying to set up. Now, where am I going with respect to those goals? Where are we heading? And you do that every week with your leadership team to where they create these flash reports. And then again, that's how you get everybody engaged. I've seen all too often to where you can sit in a room and people throw up a flash report. Okay, here's what's going on within my particular area. And then you got dead silence in the room. Well, that doesn't help any either because that means people in the room don't really know what it means. They don't know what they're looking at. So they're just kind of staring at numbers and waiting for the meeting to end. You want to make sure that when somebody throws up numbers of what's happening within their side of the organization, the rest of the organization is fully engaged to say, oh, okay, have you thought about this? I'm not sure I understand what this number is. Can you explain it to me? And then you start having conversations of how do I fix it? What can we do? Let's work together as a team. There are many organizations out there that are, I mean, uh, Napoleon Hill, you know, had the mastermind theory of basically saying that two heads are better than one. I'm a firm believer of that um, to where and that's why when you do get your leadership team into a room, it's it's amazing of how much intelligence and in sitting in that room at one given time. So utilize all the knowledge that you can. It's you can't expect yourself just because I'm the business owner. I know everything. No, you don't mm-hmm. rely on a lot of the people behind you to help you get there. You know, I love two things that are really striking me that you're sharing. One is uh, this idea of predictability, like a weekly scorecard, a flash flash report, flash card. What did you call it? A flash report. Flash report. A flash report is a weekly tool that will basically what it does. It's if you had, you know, say five goals established, five KPIs, key performance indicators set up for you know, say your area of expertise, whether that be accounting, productivity, engineering, whatever, okay? Um, Whatever their five, say, key KPIs are, establish a scorecard, as and I'll call a flash report, but establish that report of how are you doing against those goals? Where are we heading? And you track it every single week. Um, people will say, isn't weekly overkill? In my opinion, absolutely not. You can never have overkill. Maybe daily is overkill, but weekly never is. Um, you do not want to get into the situation to where you say, well, I, I'm not paying goals out until the end of the year. I'm not doing it until quarterly. So why don't I just meet a couple of times throughout the quarter and we're good enough? No, you're not. You're not going to be able to fix something when you're two weeks beforehand. You can't fix it. You need to know exactly where you're at on a trending basis. So you need to look at those goals weekly so that you know where people are at. And if you, you know, I'm a visual kind of guy. So to me, when I see a graph and I can, if I can look at a graph and see if that graph is trending in the right direction upwards, I say, okay, we're good. What can put us in a, you know, where can I have a gap in that? Um, in the world of financial, again, because I'm a financial person, but cash, cash is king. So uh, if you do a cash forecast and you cash cash forecast yourself out, say, eight to 10 weeks, that can be critical because you can find out you know, very easily to say, oh, I might be in, I'm good now. I've got $300,000 sitting in the bank now. I'm good. Yeah, but what about three weeks from now when you had to pay out your payroll and other things and you didn't get any revenue coming in? Three weeks from now, you may not be as good as you are today. Yeah. So forecast your out, yourself out long enough so that you can see where those dips can be. So again, if you graph yourself, you can see if you're going to have a spike somewhere, then fix that spike before it happens. You know, you're illustrating the value of that, you know, regular metrics. And I think it trickles down. Uh, how often do we have performance reviews with employees that are whatever quarterly or biannually or even annually? And and all that really is, from my perspective, is a past tense. Here's what you did, and now we want to hold you accountable to maybe some sort of poor performance or subpar performance instead of uh, very regular touch points to say, "Tell me what's going on here. We we see a dip here. We want to improve here." Regular cultivation. For success, and that's the second thing that I really love that you're sharing, which is this idea of collaboration, putting minds in the room and saying, "We seem to be struggling here. What ideas does everybody have to get us there?" And the same could be true with with your employees. We seem to be struggling here. Let's talk together about what we can do instead of having that be a defense mechanism or or something to sort of uh, instill fear or defensiveness. It, it can just be a guidepost, and I think that's an important, healthy way to look at these metrics. Do you agree? 
Oh, absolutely. I'll uh, kind of give you a funny story of myself personally. Um, years ago, I had um, a mentor. He was, he was very strong within my career to help me. And when we first started working together, he had a reputation that basically were people were just deathly afraid of working for him. He, he just had that kind of reputation. And I was no different. So I went to work for him thinking, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm getting into. And you go through and you have your very first review, you know, for the end of the year. And at those days, I'm old. So it was before computers and things like that. So he handed across a piece of paper and said, okay, tell me how you think you did. And I'm filling out thinking I did pretty good. On his end, he's sitting at his desk filling out how he thought I did. He basically put, I was horrible. (laughs) Okay. When we exchanged people's pieces of paper, I'm reading this of what he had for me. And I'm thinking, I'm going to get fired. This is awful. And what I learned from him on that given day, and I never have forgotten it ever since, and that is he responded with me to say, okay, clearly we are not on the same page. That's my fault. That means I didn't communicate with you throughout the year. So don't take this personally. I'm taking it to where it's personally to me. I didn't communicate with you what I should have expected from you. Now, don't think that you're going to get the same pass next year because I'm going to communicate with you throughout the year for next year. So if we're on opposite pages next year, yes, you're going to have a problem. So, uh, and it kind of was like you joking. So, so consider this your gimme. And I did. Okay. I, I learned from that so much from a standpoint when I did get into roles of leadership, I never forgot that. I always realized that it is on me. It is my responsibility to communicate with my employees on a regular basis throughout the year of what my expectation is. If I'm doing weekly flash reports and I'm monitoring where things are going, it's very easy for me to go back to the employees and say, you know what, we're slipping. We're having some problems here. Let's get it back up to where it needs to be. Or, hey, we're trending in a great direction. Thank you. Appreciate all the help that you're giving us because without you, we couldn't succeed. So how do you hold people accountable? It's through things like that. You have to be able to measure it and make sure that they know where it's at. And if you're communicating with them, you don't have as much of a problem as you think. So a lot of it's communication. Joe Stone from ProCFO Partners. What a great conversation, and I can't wait to continue it. I feel like there's a lot of layers to this, but but my my kind of key takeaways uh, from today's conversation is we have to have metrics, we have to have things we can measure that everybody, organization wide, departments, leaders, but also employees uh, can point to, and we have to have communication and collaboration around how those things happen. Uh, Joe, thanks for being with us today. Can't wait to see you again. Have a good day. You too. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and a special thanks to our subscribers. Consider becoming one today. Visit ProCFOPartners.com for more strategies and ideas for financial management and growth to help you put your business's financial picture in context.